Hey guys, it's Blockchain Brad, and today I'm very honored to be with Blockchain Royalty. That's right, we're talking with Ron Cheng, and he is none other than the founder of Elastis. Thank you very much once again, Ron, for being on the channel. Oh, thank you so much. It's uh, nice seeing you again. Likewise, mate. Now, you've been very busy, I'm sure, with all the things that you're doing technologically. You're also doing some key advances with regard to the efforts you're making to make Elastis known around the world. But Rong, let's, get, let's cut to the chase. Can you tell us a bit about exactly what the key developments are? Let's start, um, I would argue, with the alpha. Um, tell us a bit about what the alpha is with regard to Elastis and why it's so important for recent updates. Oh, actually, uh, we plan to release Alpha by the end of uh, this month. Mm -hmm. So it's not quite uh, Alpha yet. But uh, August 3rd to August 5th, we mm -hmm. have uh, a China Joy exhibition. There's a big event. Uh, it's a, a, a gaming, basically, uh, conference. There are um, tens so, of sorry uh, interrupt, wrong hundreds wrong. of thousand people attended. Sorry to interrupt, but has that happened already, given that that's the date of August 1st to the 3rd? Yeah, it's happened already. Mm -hmm. It's over. So uh, actually, we did have something um, like pre-alpha uh, demonstrated uh, during the conference. Right. So how did that go? I mean, what was your, your position as you were there? Like, what was your observation with regard to blockchain, the way things are moving? Uh, actually, it went well because uh, our booth, actually, um, we have a uh, big game, uh, Zapia and uh, IOEX and uh, Hash World. Mm -hmm. And together, we're trying to uh, demonstrate uh, what Elasso's uh, ecosystem would look like to uh, to the audience, to uh, the, to the public. Right. Well, let's let's talk about that a bit more now. One of the buzzwords right now I hear from many different uh, people in blockchain, whether they be investors, whether they be participants in you know the, the exchange, and most importantly, those in the marketplace, those who are thinking about the value that blockchain bring, brings in the in some more the industrial sector and the business sector. They are thinking a lot about the utility as well. Wrong. And I hear a lot about gaming as something that has a lot of value. Uh, with regard to right. real applications. What do you think about that as a first use case? Because uh, actually well, I'm very excited because uh, for the first time we're really demonstrating working to apply blockchain technology uh, combined with the internet and trying to build a so-called a new internet, mm -hmm. right? So uh, we could start with like IOEX. Basically we demonstrated uh, the IOEX uh, smart speakers. I, actually we have another partner called a Vision 9 mm -hmm. from Shanghai. Actually, Vision 9 also uh, demonstrated uh, a uh, set -up box, mm -hmm. the TV set -up box, uh, which uh, had some rumors because, uh, of course, uh, there was a sneak preview of those uh, boxes with the Elasus logo on it. So people were kind of uh, speculating what it is. And uh, actually, it's a, a TV set -up box. And then what I'm saying is that um, some people apparently... Uh, in a way, disappointed, saying, mm -hmm. oh, this is a set-up box, right? And uh, like a set -top set-up box. box is nothing new. Right. And uh, it's not really the set-up box, set-up box. Actually, we have the Elasus carrier built into it. And uh, before, before the uh, August 3rd, before China Joy, actually, I uh, communicated with the Telegram group uh, Elasus Telegram group saying that uh, keep your expectations low because this is after all a pre-alpha. Mm -hmm. For those uh, who don't know what alpha is, alpha is, uh, first of all, alpha is not for uh, the public. Public meaning 1.0 or in the computer terminology, uh, it's called a RTM, release to manufacture. Okay. And um, beta meaning feature complete. It's not uh, bug free. It's not uh, ready for public, but it's uh, more or less most of the major features would be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, Elasus Beta actually is planned for the end of this year. It's not for even this month, right? I say Alpha is a uh, proof of concept, right? It's a demo version for the developers saying mm -hmm. that's what we're doing, right? Because uh, what do we mean by the new internet? What do we mean by the IoT network, mm. right? What do we mean by um, monetizing the uh, social networks? So we have some basic concepts 
uh, in this uh, pre-alpha version. I see. And, well, Ron, um, let's let's talk about that a bit more, though, because you talk about this being essentially theoretical, you know, in explaining what the alpha is. But the reality is, wrong. having known you for some time, is that you've been building out Elastis for many, many years. So can you talk right. us through, you know, what the alpha really means in terms of code, what it means in terms of what it actually looks like, even though it's still in its crude form, it's meant to be for those, you know, as you mentioned, in the very very first stages, not for the public, but what does it mean to, to extrapolate, you know, what alpha actually is? Well, we, uh, during the conference, we demonstrated a, a very, very rough version of a smart web browser. Right. So the browser, you can think of it's a web browser without a network, without HTTP. Mm -hmm. So then it's very hard for the applications uh, running inside browser to hack the system or steal consumers' information. And uh, basically what's in the browser is uh, we call them dApps. The, uh, uh, another term is called a serverless. Mm -hmm. If you look at uh, the applications running on mobile phones currently, uh, they all, most of the, them called, uh, the browser called a browser server model, BS right. model. A BS and, model. Uh, That's interesting. Serverless meaning the browser without the server. Sure. So basically, you know, as you said, it's a serverless model. Now, I wanted to ask you, Rong, that must be exciting as an innovation for not just yourself having built this with your team, but also for those who are listening, those that are in the audience, you know, as participants potentially in the industrial sector, the business side, wondering how they can, you know, connect with you. How has the feedback been so far for those who've been privy to see and experience the alpha? So that's why that those are really for those uh, uh, technical geeks, mm. uh, for the internet, uh, uh, the internet gurus. Okay. Because uh, some of them, when they look at it, uh, even though it's very rough, and they're saying, "Wow, you know, it's uh, probably the most uh, aggressive uh, blockchain-related project uh, he's ever seen." I see. Right? They were just so excited. Uh, where can but on we... the other hand, there's also re responses from the. Uh, from the social network, like a Telegram saying, hey, what, uh, what? I'm not impressed. Really? Uh, how do you compare with uh, so-and-so's uh, set -up box? Right. You know, uh, well, let's, you, let's talk about that. Movie? Can you watch that movie? Right, well, let's talk about that. I'm really glad you brought that up. So what you're saying is that from the, the public's position, for the, for the small bits of information perhaps that they get about some of this alpha uh, you know, content, they're making suppositions based on what they can get. But can you tell mm -hmm. us more about what the, as you said, to use your term, these blockchain, these block geeks, as you say, what, what's their consensus? Obviously, they have much more access to understanding what the alpha is. So let's talk about yeah, that. Yeah, because what we demonstrated actually is, uh, we demonstrated the, uh, the smart speaker, right, uh, mm -hmm. from IOEX. We demonstrated uh, the setup box from Vision 9. Right. And uh, that said, uh, actually, there's uh, 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 people from the audience. Actually, there's a guy from South Africa remotely connected to the set of bugs uh, we have in Shanghai. We had in Shanghai during the exhibition, mm -hmm. right? So you basically, you can see uh, people from using a phone remotely logging that far and accessing a, uh, a set of box. The, I mean, from the service, nothing new. But then if you look down into it, we're trying to demonstrate so-called uh, Elastos Carrier, mm -hmm. which is a, a so-called decentralized carrier, a carrier that uh, running autonomously, automatically, right? Open source, neutral, and uh, with the powered by the blockchain, so we log in through a, a DID, mm -hmm. decentralized ID, because if you talk about carrier, who is giving you IDs? Right. And uh, you know, if you have uh, China Mobile giving you AT&T uh, ID or AT&T gives you IDs, right? Mm. And uh, could that could they uh, year drop into your smart speakers? And uh, it's a good question. Or, could they? I mean, what's your view could, on I that? I mean, uh, well then about. Uh, uh, we, I've heard uh, instances, right? People's um, surveillance security cameras being broadcasted into the internet. Mm -hmm. Correct? Right. And then if you look at smart homes, uh, they have different brands. They have uh, Samsung TV and uh, Netgear router and uh, yes. LG uh, washing machines. Right. Uh, right. So and, uh, Sony headphones or who knows what. Whatever, right? Because right. so then. 
The which, uh, because when you are using your phone to connect to the, your home, mm -hmm. and then which carrier actually you're using? Who is, who is the bigger brother, right? Right. So can we have a, a neutral, open source, people could have a trust, especially for those uh, small generic uh, smart home uh, device providers. Because mm -hmm. uh, we've heard uh, stories uh, for a uh, surveillance camera, for example, uh, you know, in China it's selling for 20 bucks. Sure. But then the NRE, the license fees, the royalty for the big data, you know, who is collecting data, uh, the, ro the operator basically charged them $2 of royalty mm -hmm. and uh, charged them uh, um, monthly fees for this uh, data bandwidth. Right. If you, if you look at surveillance camera of 20 bucks, the profit of the manufacturer is not even $2. Right. Right. And... Uh, after a while, they seek those um, cheaper versions of the operator because uh, some copycat versions. Then you run into problems like uh, the, uh, the cheap operators went under and or leaving quality. smart homes uh, helpless. Right. And sometimes, right. obviously, the quality is an issue as well, Wrong. Right. So with the, uh, with the blockchain-powered one, it's uh, running autonomously, mm -hmm. automatically. So as long as there's a blockchain miners, then the network will be running automatically. Absolutely. So obviously you must be excited about the way that things are progressing, but can you talk us through the code and the, and the team that you've built now? Because they go hand in hand. How is the team evolving as you evolve and you know, how's the writing of the code developing? Yeah, the code actually is coming along really. Um, we hit the milestones because uh, at, in January of this year, right, we were saying we're going to release this uh, decentralized uh, carrier alpha version by August. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, you know, we, we made it public in January and uh, we are very happy that we beat the, uh, the deadline. Congratulations Because if you look at that. software project at this size, we are very likely to be among one of the earliest uh, to open source the whole IoT network, mm -hmm. not to mention it's even blockchain based. Probably in that regard, we, we might be really the very first one in right. the world. Well, let's talk about that. Yeah. That's a big right. thing. That's a big statement. And um, obviously, have you yourself as the leader of this and having written so much and dedicated so many years to Elastis, let's talk about that in the landscape of China, for example. Now, there's a lot of discussion right now about IoT. There's so many right. blockchains wrong trying to do something in relation to that, whether it be with AI as well and in some sort of mm -hmm. synergistic approach. Talk us through some of the evidence you've got so far to show that Elastis is making some serious waves in the IoT industry, even in China specifically, what's happening. How can we know that you're moving in the right direction? Well, as I said, we are, because a lot of people talk about blockchain applications mm -hmm. or, or, or the dApps for that matter. And uh, so when you talk about blockchain plus IoT, actually, uh, what it is, is uh, as I said, to make this uh, uh, IoT secure end-to-end -end right. and uh, neutral, right? And uh, it's not uh, something comparing to other uh, IoT projects. Most of them actually are just, okay, keep the provenance, keep track of those gadgets. Uh, 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 how many of them do you have? You know, register them on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. They're really talking about uh, registrations. And, and monitoring. Uh, monitoring they're not mm. talking about like a, ca a carrier it's a 7 24 operations right because right. you literally have to send the videos audios messaging files remittance you know you eventually let the list goes on right, right. it's not just uh, okay we can keep track of uh, how many gadgets uh, do you have and uh, whether you can receive some tokens from your uh, your uh, your uh, IoT devices or not, right? Because right. in order to uh, receive uh, rewards for your IoT devices, you have to guarantee your service right. actually is uh, available. Sure. Your service is not uh, tempered with. Right, and obviously you being so focused on building out this carrier a structure and right. carrier plan, you're literally carrying the hopes and dreams of a lot of people who are, you know, really watching Elastis as you, you know, you emerge as something of a, a, a pole position, you know, technology. You're right in the forefront of something new. Are you excited about that, Wrong, that you're literally well, doing very, something? Well, because uh, 
as we're saying, carrier, if you mm. look at uh, AT&T or Verizon, but of course, AT&T is a centralized carrier. It's not sure. a decentralized. Right. We're talking about AT&T without AT&T. Right. Which right? is new. So, so it's autonomous running AT&T, basically. Right. And I mean, Ron, but, but of course, uh, the, the uh, size is much smaller, but then sure. it's a rough prototype. And Ron, can we, we clarify, is, can we clarify for the people who perhaps don't know Elastis, would you argue this is the very first one in the world that you know of that's literally trying that's to do That's the this? first one I know of, personally. Right. Maybe but, there's uh, someone uh, some in there somewhere in the world, but then, as far as I know, we are the first one, decentralized right. carrier in the world. Right. Now let's and talk, also, to, sorry, to demonstrate a carrier, we have to use a uh, video camera. We have to use a smart speaker. Sure. It's just like uh, AT&T showroom, they have phones. And if you compare, okay, how come the at and phone is not good as an uh, iPhone? Oh, right. come on. Right? <laughs> they're demonstrating the carrier. They're not de demonstrating the phones. But then they have to use a phone to prove the carrier is working. Sure. Well, See, that's the point. So, you know, I'm just basically trying to borrow your channels to uh, get, get, letting the, uh, the disappointed uh, investors or whoever, right, the mm. fans, are saying, we're not competing the setup box with existing setup boxes. Right. That's not the point. Right. The point is that we have a uh, autonomous running carrier, which is for the known, for those uh, people who really appreciate that really, really big project. Right. And the only the only thing you're really, you know, I guess, compar can, can, can be compared to is the centralized counterpart of the carrier you're becoming and you're building. Because essentially, mm -hmm. you're not that set-top box. You're not the technology that, you know, is often compared to as the hardware. You are something far greater than that. Correct. Right. So let's now talk about, you know, let's move into perhaps the sentiment from the investor. I want to talk about um, prospective business potential. Now, right now, I know that you've been focused on the technology, not so much on partnerships, but I want to talk to you about your vision and how this could build out. You know, what kind of businesses can, can, allow, can really benefit from the use of Elastis? And just how big do you think Elastis can be? Because uh, we are building a uh, blockchain-powered IoT network, smart home network. Mm -hmm. Then we're also building a, a blockchain-powered internet. Right. That's why we're working with Zapier, with working with Vuetain. Actually, the Zapier's uh, decentralized version is called uh, Vuetain. Right. Because uh, that, uh, they also demonstrated during the conference, uh, they demonstrated their uh, IPFS. Mm -hmm. They're building their own versions of IPFS. They call um, DPFS, the Decentralized Private uh, File System. Actually, uh, it's a it's a uh, optimized version for mobile phones, mm -hmm. and also because uh, collaborating with Elastos, we have different uh, accounting schemes to reward the um, the data bandwidth, the, inner, uh, the the data flows instead of the data bandwidth. I see. Let's say if you read a gigabyte of file, you're rewarded. Okay. Instead of uh, you have a bandwidth of uh, you, you have a hard drive of one terabyte of hard drive, then you you get rewarded, right? Because right. we're rewarding the people who who really providing the file services instead of uh, the how big is your hard drive. I see. So that's quite innovative so we're in actually itself. Actually, making a different uh, uh, ver versions of uh, IPFS, uh, different uh, versions of. Uh, incentive, uh, you know, token economy there. Right. Now, obviously, that fits in beautifully with the roadmap itself. Now, you've implied that you're making, forging more connections for real application. You know, you talked about the DPF, right. DPFS as well. Now, what's the direction in terms of the roadmap for the next few milestones? And, you know, given that you've already hit the nail on the head for every target so far, what can we expect based on your roadmap? Well, we are actually, uh, we, we, <laughs> We are going to release Alpha by the end of this month. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to move on to the beta stage. Okay. We are going to focus more on our partners. For example, to make sure IOEX uh, smart speakers and uh, Vision 9 uh, setup boxes uh, will release to the consumer world, hit the uh, Christmas uh, shipping deadline. I see. To the United States, to Europe, and uh, of course, uh, again, I should uh, warn the audience, mm -hmm. it's uh, only beta version. It's a very, very limited uh, functionality comparing to 
the real product. Because so if you are releasing a set of box, mm -hmm. it's a really commercial grade product. So they have uh, TV stations, they have uh, you know this uh, all those features, right? You right. expect from set of box or like the IOEX uh, smart speaker. Actually, it's a uh, um, Android, no, it's a uh, Google compatible, mm -hmm. uh, Amazon compatible. They're really literally shipping to the U.S. and Europe. I see. And uh, so, to hook into so essentially, Amazon's right. uh, Alexa and uh, Google Home. Right. right, and essentially, obviously, as you were alluding to several times, is that we're still very much in the early stages of development for Elastis. And for those to expect for everything to be in place now is just it's quite impractical. Would that be fair to say? Correct, because what we're doing actually, we just put uh, our protocol uh, along with the existing mature protocols. Mm -hmm. Right. We build them both into the uh, same boxes, right? Mm -hmm. And those uh, boxes could be uh, updated, so-called OTA, over the air updating. Okay. From time to time, so we are putting into the uh, putting Elasso's uh, seeds or agents into those uh, hardwares and shipping hundreds of thousands of them by uh, Chris, I mean, our partners will ship uh, hundreds of thousands of to, uh, to the markets, right? By we Christmas. Commit, we commit, I promise to have only 40,000 pieces in running. The 40,000 uh, Elasus carriers running instead of, oh, we just- And when will that be wrong? Warehouses. When do you promise that for? For the end of this year. Wow, and that's a big statement. So you really are genuinely transitioning through your alpha, beta, and then obviously moving forward beyond that into something of real use case. You're going to have real hardware supply connected to Elastis. You're going to have functionality and people who can come to understand the brand in hopefully in their home in years to come. Is that the exact plan? Right, because um, as I said, uh, comparing to like uh, Google Home or Amazon Home, right? Maybe for most of the consumers, they don't even see the features uh, we provide. Right. Right. But uh, some of them, you know, like at least 40,000 will have functions turned on a little bit mm -hmm. and manipulating for the geeks who will check, okay, I'm volunteer for testing. Right. Sure. Right? And so those guys will be enabled and uh, can see some of the features going on and updated, you know, some features. So, um, Again, we are trying to deploy this new uh, decentralized carrier, mm -hmm. right? So uh, on top of this uh, carrier, then not only we're you know like sign up boxes, not only they're going to see those uh, centralized uh, internet uh, broadcasting stations, mm -hmm. they probably also going to see some decentralized contents from like uh, Zapier, right? Right, those. Uh, uh, home generated uh, content. You know, if you turn on, if you're for the adventurers, you want to test, and some of those boxes would be enabled so you can test, let's say, the blockchain brand and right. uh, <laughs> do this a decentralized channel, right? Instead of on YouTube. Exactly. And that's what we like want to. You own some episodes of your own, right? You put it right. in, in your home cloud drive, then you broadcast them to some small audience and testing the video quality, testing whether you could be rewarded by ELA tokens. Exactly, so obviously that's the point, is that you do incentivize people to have more control. We've always talked about that wrong, in that right. there's autonomy uh, for the content creators, for those who participants in the industry as well, itself. But I wanna go back and talk to you a bit about the current marketplace, because it is really relevant, it's on the tip of the tongue of many people, and it's very much creating some anxiety right now. Because obviously mm -hmm. pri the price of many of the different blockchains as they've e emerged into the space has been problematic to say the least. Now I want to talk to you about that with Ella, with, with Elastis, because obviously it's a long-term project. It's something that's sure. all about utility. But what would you say mm -hmm. to the people who are simply knocking on your door saying, when moon? You know, we hear this kind of phrase all the time, but let's get real about this. Let's address it directly. What kind of blockchain and, uh, and what kind of project is Elastis all about? And really, should we be having conversations about moons anymore? Because <laughs> so we are not, because uh, I personally don't talk about prices. What we're, we're, we're going to uh, elaborate is that, uh, as I said, uh, by from the end of August, actually from September to uh, end of December, mm -hmm. so we're going to focus on user experience, building some real uh, scenarios such as uh, 
you know, turn on your smart speaker without fearing people ear dropping, right? Right. And uh, also, we are going to we are working with like Zapier, putting some short videos into your home cloud drive, delivering them through our smart web browser to uh, your audience, and uh, in incentivize uh, the uh, distributor, incentivize the uh, original author, right? Right. So that said, if you build uh, the smart uh, that that uh, set up box, right? Mm. You can put uh, like a, a personal cloud drives built in. So if you just want to share your home video, home uh, pictures through uh, uh, to your relatives, mom and dad, mm. very small family circle. So your home bandwidth is very likely to be sufficient. I see. Right, fast enough. But on the other hand, if you have a million audience, definitely your uh, uploading speed won't sustain that kind of stress. Right. So uh, you need to buy some of the bandwidth or uh, file storage, IPFS file storage, right. so then you can reach a million audience, correct? Correct. So in that sense, we're saying this network, the smart IoT network or smart web, we are going to provide them for free. And uh, the decentralized IDs, everyone can log in. So we make sure uh, you know all the gadgets, all the users, all the digital contents would have a ID of their own. And, um, and they're we, all free. And Ron, are we talking about global reach here? Are we talking about when you say we're going to provide, are you talking about those of a Chinese audience? Or are you talking about the... No, no, the no, no, no. I uh, first of all, those uh, gadgets are shipped to Europe and the U.S. and uh, I don't think they're for China. Right. Well, it's good that we're so clarifying the, the, this I mean, because the set-up box is probably for some of them for Chinese market. Sure. But the smart speaker definitely is not for Chinese market. I see. So you're really genuinely from the outset focused on global, you know, global reach and global applications. Correct. Because we are completely open sourced. Actually, mm -hmm. we're moving into uh, as an international project. We're going to set up this uh, so-called uh, cyber republic, republic community. Mm -hmm. We're going to give out more than half of the uh, tokens in the long run to the community instead of to uh, the miners or to the mm. uh, so investors. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Talk us through that. Now, obviously, that's a lot. That You say a half at least. That's a huge part of your, your overall token supply. So how can you afford to do that? Uh, because, you see, we are building a, a so-called uh, new internet. Mm -hmm. We would call them smart web. Smart web powered by, by blockchain. Sure. So, uh, actually, not only we have to build this uh, smart web, but we have to actually have in, build the ecosystem, right? Sure. So, without an ecosystem, we cannot have a web. Right. So, uh, we need, uh, if you're talking about a web, a new internet, how many uh, different features no one can foresee how many different uh, uh, features or functionalities, websites, a way of people building this new upcoming new internet, right? right? So that's why we let the public to decide. Let's say you have some good ideas, you can mm. go on to cyberrepublic.org and say, okay, I can build this fancy uh, social network, or we can build this uh, uh, new way of uh, monetization or something. You propose, and the, the the community council will vote and uh, allocate uh, uh, tokens to you. So, so that's kind of way you say uh, you see developer being the miner. Absolutely. Well, clearly, and, uh, clearly the wrong. Ideas You're... being mining. Absolutely. So the the focus is on obviously the long term for you. You you know we talked about you won't talk about price, and I respect that. But once again, I do want to you know reinforce that you are long term, and with that respect, no doubt that's the reason why you don't talk about price. Is that fair to say? We because do build. Uh, we do try to build uh, tokenomics. Mm. For example, you know, for individual user with the only uh, audience of ten. It's a free, but if you want to reach a million, you need to pay for your hard drive. You need to pay for the file token, for the bandwidth, mm -hmm. right? So there's a super node for relays. So we're building a second tier, the carrier tier, instead of the joint, joint mining tier. And also there's a 
during the China Joy exhibition, we also demonstrated uh, the Bitmain mining machines. Yeah, let's talk about that. Uh, that's I mean, because another... Bitmain's a major investor in Elastis. Let's talk about that. They are. And uh, we are doing merge mining for those uh, who don't know. Actually, the merge mining with Bitmain are also uh, running. It's uh, progressing smoothly. Mm -hmm. We expect uh, after we release the alpha version by the end of August, we're going to have uh, mining pools to start to mine ELA and BTC at the same time. And this is before the end of the year, well and truly. Uh, begin before at the uh, very likely to be in September. Very, very interesting. Likely. I will still say the end of year, okay? Okay, I don't yeah, wanna... to be safe. But that's still a very exciting move <laughs> but, because but, that's, but real, that's when is, real uh, applications... Promise, right? uh, by the end of the year, we're going to have merge mining. I see. And we'll I think have 40,000 pieces of hardware running in homes. So well, very, uh, it looks like we're going to hit both uh, multiple times. Absolutely. So obviously, wrong. there's a lot happening. You've talked about a lot of different uh, developments. But what about with regard to events? Let's talk about that. Now, I hear on the grapevine that there's a big event coming for Elastis. Can you tell us a bit about that? Uh, yeah, because uh, this uh, Elastos, the new internet project, right, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, supported by those uh, private token sales, public token sales, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, the communities. Sure. Uh, we started this uh, uh, project August 24th of uh, last year. So almost, almost a year ago. So we are going to have a, a one-year anniversary celebration in Chiang Mai, Thailand. I see. Uh, Shangri-La, Shangri I think, hotel. Okay, so the Shangri-La uh, Hotel, invited, Elastis uh, is going to have its first birthday. Yeah, we're going to uh, invite like uh, 90 or so international community members, mm -hmm. those volunteers who helped us along the way. And also we're going to sponsor about uh, 60 or so full-paid, uh, full-time employees traveling there. So we're expecting at least 100 to 200 because they're relatives and more uh, freebies they invite themselves. Right, I see. That's, right? a, that's a big okay. deal. So obviously you really, you, you know, you really want to celebrate this milestone of having achieved so much. We do. As I said, we are going to not only kick off uh, 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 the uh, merge mining with Bitmain, uh, but it's not open to public yet because it's the alpha mm. version, right? Right. So, but then we are going to have a real merge mining with uh, partners uh, from mining pools. And that, and and part of the celebration is also connecting and and, and announce, making any new announcements. So, what's the idea? Yeah, of this? we are going to uh, the real announcement is actually we're going to transition the mm -hmm. Lasso's Foundation to so-called uh, cyber public. I see. So basically, the leadership is uh, changing. Right. So that's the, the next first level. Year, the first year's leadership, of course, is uh, like uh, me and the uh, handphone and uh, the foundation key partner uh, 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 engineers, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, then we plan to have from this August uh, annual celebration to next year uh, annual celebration, then from alpha to RTM. RTM meaning a release to manufacture, which is a 1.0, open to everyone, right. right? The public chain open to everyone. So we plan to have one year transition, meaning uh, the councils of uh, cyber public for this year is still nominated by the foundation, but then next year would be free election, so I you see. run, right? Go to your super nodes for votes. Right. So essentially, and, uh, year year on year, wrong things are changing for for Elastis. We uh, have already uh, written up the draft versions of uh, constitutions for the separate public. Right. So really, the it's a it's a it's a metamorphosis of of right? pro it's a metamorphosis of process. You're literally mm -hmm. you're transitioning year on year to become something of a truly decentralized nature. Yeah, because if we announce, if we uh, make uh, the constitution public, right? We make uh, the voting procedures public. We, by all means, we decide to follow. I see. Well, I really appreciate right? you letting us know about that because I mean, a lot of people wouldn't be aware of the whole the, the whole plan of Elastis to move As from. As I said, the there we're allocating close to 60 million ELAs 
right. to uh, the cyber republic. I see. The multiple signing uh, wallets. We're going to give it away, right? Right. So people so can expect is, big things. Is it going to be simply a big giveaway, or is it going to be something where you really think about how this happens for value? Because without uh, the, without our partners, without uh, the community, right? Actually, actually, there's no internet. Right. So, Elastos is not a a product. Elastos is not a company. Because if you talk about uh, if you're building a phone, if mm. you're building a router, if you're building uh, like um, WeChat, those are like very typical commercial company powered uh, backed products. Right. They're profit geared but, entirely. But if you talk about the internet, internet, the old internet, right? The internet was decentralized. Yes. I mean, but, of but, course, there are some sponsorships, but then it's also. Auto autonomously, mm. automatically running. Right, but Rong, I want to talk to you about this. Now, for those who are invested in the utility, in the functionality of Elastis, how can they, you know, regard this as some sort of, you know, investment, perhaps, if that, for want of a better word, if year on year you're planning on becoming authentically decentralized and thus, and for the people, how does that, you know, relate to the, you know, investments and, and you know putting injecting money into something with an expectation of return if you're trying to do something that essentially is almost Robin Hood like it's almost for the people a technology for everyone to utilize yeah. how does it become profitable and maintain profitability as as Elastis if you're not a company because ELA token is not a security token it's a utility token utility sure. By all means, should be used. Sure. Instead how, of traded right. in the uh, exchange. Sure. Of course, like a like a fiat money, right? A US dollars, you can buy them in the exchanges. Right. But here's the so, paradox, and this is why I do want to talk to you about this. Is as you know as well, is in the beginning, in the first iterations of ICOs, that's not how it works. Not in the functionality side of things. Sure, in the terms of the terminology, we know their terms of utilities, but they don't function like that because people, there's mentality, they're thinking about their value as an investment. So is it possible <laughs> that we just need to reframe everything so that people are very aware this is all about a token for application? It is. Because uh, this is a utility token. Mm. And uh, we generate uh, use cases. For example, you buy bandwidth, you buy hard drives, right? And uh, you register names. If you publish some uh, uh, podcasts or uh, your uh, videos, you want to be searched. Uh, let's say you want to buy this uh, keyword blockchain video. Right. Right? And so we, have, we, 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 we do have uh, uh, partners. We plan to have partners working on like a transparent, decentralized marketing engines, search engines. Right. And... Uh, so it's a Those, big, uh, it's a big deal commercial. wrong. But the reason why I ask you and sort of push you on this is because obviously people are wanting to know that there's value in this utility. That's the point I'm making. Is yeah, that, you know, uh, you, some people have to buy the token mm. in order to be ranked uh, higher. Right. You have so to let, buy bandwidth to reach a million audience. So let's talk about that a bit more so we're clear. How can, can you explain to the audience how potentially the utility value could increase over time in a, the Elastis economy? Because uh, there's always a need uh, for people to buy and sell, right? Mm. And, and let's and, talk about, uh, once again, the scarcity factor. How scarce is Elastis in this context as well? Elastis is, uh, uh, we uh, uh, pre-mine, right? In the Genesis block, we pre-mine about 33 million. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the token sales, 8 million. And we're giving away, given the uh, separate public, about uh, 16 million. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Elastis Foundation for the core team that develops the uh, the blockchain sidechain, you know, um, this IoT carrier, decentralized carrier. So there we reserved about uh, uh, three mil around three million. I mean, we, we actually reserved three and a half million, but then right. uh, now it's uh, right right around less shy of three million uh, Yaoi tokens. Mm -hmm. So and also we uh, we sold some to other investors like uh, Bitman, Neo, and uh, some uh, hobby exchange. I see. For some key partners, right? Sure. Uh, 
So what does all so what does all of this mean though? You know, for the future value. You know, given that there's you've given us the history of and, and the distribution of these tokens. What does it mean though for future value of this utility though? This the, the functionality that what this token can do, and how it can possibly grow in value. Because we do, we are trying to on this smart web, on this new internet. We're building a smart economy, mm -hmm. right? Uh, after this beta version or. Uh, We'll try to have so-called uh, digital capsules, basically cap encapsulating video content as executables and share them through social networks, and uh, so create the scarcity of those uh, ebooks, movies, and games, and monetize them through peer-to-peer uh, -peer selling of uh, digital assets like uh, games or movies. I see. Right? Capsule them as digital assets. So there you have to use uh, tokens to buy digital assets and uh, to sell, to incentivize the middleman who is, you know, make the deal. So those are the, as I said, we are really literally a uh, utility uh, token, right? And uh, we try to make the uh, use cases so people buy and sell. As long as if the economy growth is over, let's say 4%, mm. then the scarcity actually is a shortage of of money, correct? Because correct. let's say it depends on how fast you can grow this uh, virtual economy, mm. smart economy. Right. So in a way, we are uh, reserved. I mean, basically, we, we, we're we saying uh, there's a, a 4% uh, inflation. Mm -hmm. If we beat the 4% 4, 4 inflation, there's a scarcity of uh, monetary notes. I see. So you factored that right. in your design, you know, for the long term as well. Right. Right, mm -hmm. and also um, we're trying to build uh, uh, sub economies now. Like uh, we are building side chains, mm -hmm. and we also have partners porting, like uh, Ethereum EVM onto side chain. So right. we're building a sub economy, uh, Ethereum compatible a smart contract. So you're cross, you're cross chain compatible have, is what you're talking about. Right. We're also going to have so called a friend chains. The mm -hmm. friend chain would be literally Ethereum, Ethereum. Okay. So the Ethereum chain using ETH versus uh, Ethereum compatible chain, uh, side chain use uh, EOA. I see. So, so uh, I, right. So it keeps the line going from the, its uh, its own uh, blockchain right through to its own token. Right. So for those sub economies like uh, uh, Ethereum and uh, other well known public chains, right? We are, Elastos will be the off chain for all of those uh, uh, well known public chains. Because when you talk about uh, Ethereum, when you talk about uh, Neo, Neo, when you talk mm. about, you also talk, you, they all talk about on chain, off chain. Right. What's an off chain? Off chain is the internet. Right. So when you are from a smart contract going off chain, if you run into a uh, insecure internet, Right, you're robbed along your way. You're cheated mm -hmm. for your website. Who are you going to cry to? Right. So that's why we're building this uh, secure new internet to be the off chain of all this uh, front chain. So essentially, you know, we've heard the iterations or the discussions about layers. So if we want to move it across more horizontally, to so to speak, you're essentially the layer zero in terms of the internet for these blockchains. Right. So then. That's where we see uh, there are tons of needs. And also there's needs for offline, I mean, usage for EOA. Say, if you are EOAs in those uh, uh, territory or regions, mm -hmm. which could uh, legalize using tokens, you can buy beer, you can buy, <laughs> right? Like uh, I went to Switzerland, right? where you literally can use tokens to buy some tangible stuff. Right. So Already. there, because we're building an internet, right? So definitely we see not only the traffic build in this virtual cyber republic, but also it applies to the real world as well, right? In a right. way you can think of it, right? Because people use the token to wherever, right, they want to use. Sure. Well, obviously you must be excited. Like let's, let's just, you know, move the clock forward, let's say five years wrong. To finish off, I want to talk about your vision. Now, paint us a picture of the way that you see the elastic economy in five years, let's say. I really want to get, but give us an example of someone just accessing IoT, let's say in Switzerland, 
you know, what would their life be like in rela with relation to how they would interact with Elastis in five years? Do you think if you continue in the milestones you're already hitting, how will, how yeah, will Elastis bit, be relevant uh, then? You know, in their smart homes, they will have a uh, autonomous running, neutral smart home network. You know, neutral meaning not uh, biased towards uh, Samsung, Apple. You know, those big names, right? Because mm. it's neutral to everyone. Right. Flat playground, and also to the internet users, they expect to have social networks and uh, where they can uh, trade uh, digital assets, crypto, uh, no, digital capsules, peer to peer. Mm. So in a way you can look at it, uh, uh, if we use uh, fiat money, you know, you use a uh, US dollar to buy a book, mm -hmm. correct? So that's a trans business deal, that's a transaction. You use uh, money to buy something. And yeah. uh, we are, what we're saying is, because it's operating system, they're doing the atomic swap. You give me tokens, I give you a digital capsule. Sure. Right? So this capsule could be a movie, could be a game, could be anything, right? Uh, so, so, essentially, virtual, virtual. so essentially what you're saying is in Switzerland in five years, you're going to see a lot more atomic swaps happening where fiat necess isn't necessarily the, 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 the token of exchange, but more so it's this decentralized mechanism that's built, premised uh, Ella, for example, in exchange for many, a multitude of things, whether that be, you know, uh, an e-book, whether that be some other technology. What you're saying is that we're re going to reassess entire economies based on new ways of transacting. I hope so. Hmm. Well, we look forward to watching that evolve and unfold, and no doubt you're very confident that Elastis is going to be leading that. So far, so good. <laughs> so we have a uh... Another year to go? Well, obviously wrong. It's been an absolute privilege talking to you. We could literally talk for hours about all the different things that you are doing. But one thing that I'm really hearing from you in this update is that you're literally doing stuff with your team. You're not just talking. You're talking about a lot of code you've built. You're talking about real applications and utilities that are Correct. coming. And we're talking about alpha going to beta. So for those who don't know about Elastis, the, the proof is in the pudding. If you have a look at the history of Elastis, you can see they've literally hit the benchmarks that they've said they're going to. And there's a record of updates that we've done. So on behalf of all the people, Rong, we do appreciate the efforts you're making to provide these updates. And we sincerely look forward to seeing you continue to develop Elastis into this long-term real use case, real carrier, real, real, real browser, real system that's designed to be something that provides services for people, not just now, but in the future for decentralized positions and businesses. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time and uh, giving us this opportunity to uh, reach our audience. You're always welcome and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you.